Tell me about you. Well, it's um. You want to come a little closer? Thank you. Thank you. There's plants all over the place. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
school. Uh, anyway, so I appreciate that. You guys still look so scattered, but anyway, it's all right. Um, but I want to thank everyone. Did I miss anyone? Did I miss anyone? No? Right? I didn't miss anyone. So I really want to appreciate everyone for coming at 10 o'clock in the morning to, to come and see me. Some say it's of interest and some have nothing better to do. But you know what? I appreciate that. And, um, you know, we got started a little bit earlier only because it's me. You know, you want to get to know people. But it's all about the energy and who is in the room. And we can see there's a common theme. Every room there's always a common theme. So I would say to you all, if you all want to know a lot about a cup, uh, to combine a couple of things you have here. This is a gentleman you should really be speaking to at some point in time. I mean, we used to be together and he taught me a lot, a lot. I mean, get the Google Hangout and all that stuff. But we've come a long way since. So please meet Rob, have a conversation with him, have coffee with him. He loves coffee. I don't know if he still mm -hmm. drinks coffee. Yes. But, um, <laughs> he loves coffee. Thanks. And um, yeah, he loves Tim Hortons. I can tell you the Tim Hortons too. I don't know if he still go. No, he goes. He doesn't go there anymore. Mm -hmm. But, um, what I'm saying to you, I want each one of you, those, anybody has cards here? Business cards? At all? Nobody has business cards? Do you have business cards? Okay, so make sure you all share your business cards. And although, think, I mean, some of you may believe, you know, in the same room, similar industry, but everybody has a unique talent, and you can learn from each other. We can collaborate and support each other. I know you probably may not see each other after you leave this room, but I always encourage you to stay connected. Just That's how Amy, I met Amy last year, when she came with Jim, and you trying to figure out the camera? Yeah. <laughs> to put it on? Yeah, no, it's okay. It's, I got a couple of shots of okay. you, so. All right. So one of the things is, um, we only have like less than an hour now to talk about, you know, are you a brand? So if anybody can actually say they represent their brand, they really and truly, besides Rob, and say hi. Hi. What's your name? I'm Keith. Keith. Before you sit down quickly, but you can sit while you're talking. So what do you do? Because we're getting started, so I don't want to leave you off from the instruction to everybody else. Sure. So I uh, run a company called My Instruction Manual. So I publish books and podcasts and other kinds of content, and it's about personal development and self-improvement. Cool. And why are you here? Uh, I guess I'm here to connect with other people that are doing similar kinds of things, focused on, on content? Mm -hmm. Well, similar, or it doesn't matter. All the industries can connect with each other. Yeah. Because everybody needs each other at some point in time, right? Thank you for sharing. So again, like I said, you know, it's are you brand. You have to be your brand. What does that mean? You know, you are your business and the business is you. Know, one of the issues I have right now is, and the concerns I have is, I'm going to pass these around, not because I want to, but I'm going to share something with you all. Oh, I'll have enough here. Oh, I have more, but that's okay. I'll, I'll get you guys more. What are the things you can do with a card? Okay, I have a It's very important to have a card that says who you are. And what I mean by that is the fact that the title on the card, I've seen some people say they're yeah, coaches, some people say they're some some crazy, I don't know what, and it doesn't identify who you are. So one of the things we're doing, we talk. Of, I talk a lot now about, are you the CEO of your company? Because I had a friend who wants to create this recording, well, well look at music, he's a, state, he's a studio musician way back in the time in England, and he wanted to do it again, and I said, we need to do something like a recording maybe before, because I'm like a problem solver. If I see something's missing, like the international men's day, I go and I do it. Mm -hmm. So I said, what are you going to say? Well, I'll be a marketing director. I said, but what does that mean? So although you may be a specialist in your area, which is cool, okay, but you also have to let people know you're the boss. You don't have to act cocky like a boss. But for example, when we say president and CEO that of 10 is, well, Actually, this one doesn't say president and CEO, but this one says founder and CEO of the um, Entrepreneurs Network, which is a network of group that we put together globally um, to help entrepreneurs. But my other card for all the media says president and CEO. Actually, this one says president and CEO as well. But the point is, when people see that, they have a different conversation with me. And CEOs will speak to CEOs differently. So when I go to LinkedIn, I have almost like 6,000 people, which was selected specifically for me. And 
They Google you. They look at you. Then they want to have conversations with you. I've had conversation with um, Mohammed Fakir. Um, I had conversations with um, John from Certified Hebrew Burger. All those guys in there are going to be part of a, um, a show I'm doing. But the point I'm saying is, they will take you seriously and they'll have a different conversation. They wouldn't meet with you. But you've got to be the person. You've got to act the way you're supposed to act. Yes? So what if your brain is your name? What if your brain is a name? That's fine. Your brain is a name, but you are who you are. You can still put CEO or something? Well, you, is there somebody else you have to report to? <laughs> Where would you put like, your, what you actually do for your Well, your brand, I also have a brand with my name on it. But if you have a company, it's better you take put the name to the company, right? As well. You, you all start that way. We start off with our name. Like my name, Deanne Oja Ali, it actually goes to a different website. It's just easier for people. And by the way, go and set up um, Google Alerts on your own name and your businesses, yes. please. Okay? Trust me at that point. Just do it. So anything that any anything on the internet that relates to your name or company or so forth, you will get a Google Alert. Okay? Which is really something to do that. Yes. Can I just say something, Dan? The question of if your brand is your name, if it were me and I was starting out a new company, lessons laid forward, I would not make the brand my own name and the only reason for that is succession planning. Mm -hmm. So if you ever decide to sell the business, if you ever decide to merge the business, if it's your own name, it's harder to get rid of it. So I would actually be setting up my brand as a company name and brand that company name would make you part of that brand. What a lot of people do, a lot of coaches, and um, holistic um, businesses and so forth, that's what they do. They put their name in there, which is, you know, that's what it is. But because most of what they do, because it's most cost effective to do it. Right, just like you just said, I, I just, I just actually, I had my other company, MVP Media, with a business partner, well, that's another story for another day. Uh, business partner, I had to rebrand. It doesn't mean I didn't say I was not in the company, um, in media industry from 2014. So I took it forward and I rebranded to other media now. But the point I'm saying is, you don't want to take away what you, what you put into it going forward. But Rob is right. If you're going to, and you could afford to, in the old days people couldn't afford these things, but now it's a little bit more affordable. If you're going to do it, do it right the first time. Okay? Because then people say, well, well what do you do then? What do you do? You're your brand, but what do you do? It's going to be a little more hard to convince people as opposed to people go and see and Google and see, you know, go on LinkedIn or go anywhere and see all the media. They'll also see my name associated, even the bank. I could write checks with my name and I could write checks with the business name and it could go either which way, right? So the way it's set up. So you have to think very carefully about how you want to position yourself in the marketplace from day one. Yes, okay. And, and when we're talking about like the business part mm -hmm. of you as well and networking, like for example today, mm -hmm. coming from a marketing design point yes. of view, which I've been doing, I always do a business card with one side that is not glossy because I always write on mm -hmm. who I meet and mm -hmm. when I meet them, what year mm -hmm. it is and where. Mm -hmm. So if I, like you, you might meet 20 people today, grab their card and like I write, then I'll go back and Google them. But yeah, if you have a glossy card, it's too hard to write on. So that card. One side that is not glossy so that people can write on it. I appreciate that. And yeah. we've had cards like that. That card was designed specifically. It and you can, write, you can write on that card some, I mean, the other cards we have UV and so forth. But mm -hmm. we designed it specifically in a very special way. Actually, um, I'm not going to say this on camera, but the person who and I sat down and designed that, we did it in a very specific reason, the font, the this, the that. Mm -hmm. And the, the um, the, what do you call it, the, um, the branch belongs to the Olive Media. It belongs to Olive Media. So Olive 10, the entrepreneurs that is a brand, we didn't open two companies. We didn't want to register two companies to confuse people. So Olive Media Network is a parent company where we work with companies and organizations. They hire us and we, you know, we're not an agency, but we work with other entrepreneurs or photographers, videographers to help them build their business at the same time. So 10 is a brand, the CEO show talking to CEOs globally is a brand. Everything is a brand of olives. So we have a peer on company and everything has a consider brands. 
all the projects we do are considered to be brands, okay? And the glossy, it looks nice and it gets more depth of color, but just do one side like, for everybody here because you, then you can write on it and make notes about the person. But there's no right or wrong with that um, in regards the to... The glossy um, does look good, it's just... It, it's with that for specific reason, like I said, um, it's, it depends on the industry as well and it depends on the person. It's not a one size fits all. So I would say yes and no to that. Um, but again, it all depends on what you do with the images, right? So one of the things you have to think about is, um, you know, how you position and press, uh, present yourself in uh, your company in the industry or globally or for anybody that you meet. So we're coming back to the um, set. I think it is. Yep. Um, in regards to, he's a fitness trainer. You know, start putting some more videos and do some stuff and get a podcast or go to blog talk or go yeah. and have as much visibility as you possibly can. That is hugely important. Now, I'm not here to say you have to write a book, you have to have a podcast, you have to have a TV show, you have to have this. Well, I have all of it. Um, and if you want to know how, let me know. And if you want to get production done, again, doing maybe a fitness workout show and so forth. All of these things are possible and cost effective too as well. So at this day and age, as we speak in 2018, the idea is, is how comfortable you feel, but eventually if you're going to start building your business, you're going to be on stage, you're going to be on TV or radio, you gotta know what you're talking about, then you need to have a really solid brand, somebody to listen to you, or blogs, or articles, let people write stuff on you, people have written some of stuff. Rob has done stuff with us in magazines and all things like that before, um, but that's in the moment. Um, please keep it in the archives, that's pretty much your, you know, your, um, your portfolio that you're looking at. No, no, why podcast? A couple of days ago, podcast told me this was canceled. Then two days ago, I almost didn't see the email, I was telling Amy, I, didn't, I almost didn't see the email. And then it said it's approved. I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Honestly, and I told, I did tell her, I said, you know what, I, I didn't really plan because it's more interactive, but I have this, it's very simple, and I said, you know what, it is what it is. So the point is, but he takes the opportunity, now he's filming it, you get a copy, the last time I didn't get a copy, but that's a different story, but the fact is now we're going to use this. I put it on our website at 10 and so forth. In our channel 10 for the entrepreneurs network where the members could get, uh, get access to it eventually. So we talk about why you're here. Um, we have a few new people in here. Just quickly, your name, sir? Uh, Tim. Tim, another Tim. How many Tims do you have in here? And uh, what do you do and why you're here? Uh, digital marketer specializing a lot in SEO. Um, what are you looking for? Why are you I'm here? looking to kind of leave my day job and improve my uh, consulting business to try and get that going full time so I'm just trying to fill up my website with you know trying to get my brand going so well I mean if you I knew you missed the first part of it and I apologize for that because you were yeah, sorry I was no 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 came all the way from London so no not at all like I said we have a conversation so. please don't yeah. hesitate um, somebody else came in after Mark you came in after hey how are you Mark no, Evans uh, I, run, I run a marketing consultancy called Mendy Consulting. Okay. And why are you here, Mark? Uh, well, I'm speaking after you, which is <laughs> interesting. Are you on the panel? Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm doing a workshop, and uh, I'm also interested in talking to and listening to people in digital marketing, just new perspectives and new ideas. Cool. We have a lot of digital marketing people here. And um, did we miss a uh, mic? My name is Mike. Yeah, Mike, yeah. I, I didn't tell my name, that's weird. Like, yeah, I see you in the Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, yeah. By the way, I am a master practitioner and it'll be a hypotherapy, okay? So I, I do. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I do yeah. some cool stuff, okay? <laughs> yeah, so I'm just a marketing, trying to get into marketing and uh, trying to. See a lot of the marketing uh, presentations this weekend. Okay. Do you have a business? I, I, I sort of work in communications, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to see, uh, you know, because I'm in relative communications and marketing, advertising, and those things I'm trying to get into. So, so you don't have a business registered? No. Okay. You plan to register one soon? Uh, no, no, exactly. I'm trying to get work in in that fi in the field. Oh, okay. So you want to be an employee? Yes. Okay. All right. 
we now have a very far away to go. But uh, hi, sorry. And your name? Hema. Hema. Yes. Yeah, nice to meet you. So why are you here? What's your name? And what are you looking for? Oh. You could do it in the opposite order. Okay. <laughs> Are you asking me? Yes. Oh, my name is Hema. Uh, why am I here? Stand up um, so they can see you. Kind of short, oh. short behind you. I'm kind of short. Thank you for that. <laughs> no, I, 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 I told everybody to come in the middle, but now you're well, I, I'm happy to go over there. I didn't want to disrupt. No, 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 no. So my name is Hema. Um, why am I here? Um, one of my colleagues is actually presenting later on today. Um, and I thought I would just come and see uh, kind of what else is happening during the day. Um, what do I want to get out of it? I don't know. Uh, there's always things for entrepreneurs to learn. Absolutely. Um, so I figured I would come and see what there is to learn. Do you have a business? I do. I'm a nutritionist. Um, oh, this so or traditional? Holistic. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I actually spent my career in marketing. And you know, you know all the things until you have to do them all for yourself mm -hmm. and, and running your own business. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's nice to learn little bits and pieces of how to streamline um, all of the aspects of uh, a business when I no longer have a team of 20 people able to do all of the little things for me cool. as I did when I worked at Cooper. Cool. Now, how many people here have, put your hands up high so I can see it? There's a reason why I'm doing this. How many people here, because I kind of get lost now in the numbers, have a business registered? Okay. Hands up. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. How many here have it? Keep your hands up so I can see it. How many people have it? as a sole proprietorship. Okay, you all need to register it. We went through that earlier in the beginning, but you need to register it as a limited is probably the best option. The difference between limited and corporation doesn't make much difference. But limited, um, you know, it can be a little bit expensive with accountants, but if you want to get, uh, have an accountant who does it very affordable, extremely affordable, because again, to do for other people, let me know. Um, but you need to do that. One, number one biggest thing was liability. I couldn't sleep. I had one company was was in uh, Seoul until about a month, a month before I dissolved the partnership. Then I registered it by the time the people came in. Then I rebranded and then I incorporated again. So um, been there, it's a big, big difference. Big difference, but the peace of mind is nobody regards the liability. I mean, Okay. You want to introduce yourself quickly? Amanda. Amanda? Nice to meet you. Good, and you are, everybody's coming one by one. And your name, sir? Rob. Rob. You want to quickly introduce yourself? I think we'll sit in the introductions. I'll introduce yourself. Uh, Amanda, I live here in Toronto uh, in the summer, and I'm just working. You work in what? I've finished school and everything. Okay, so systems. why are you here? What are you looking for? What can we help you? Just uh, try to get. What's your background? What do you, what do you, is your interest? My background is uh, like. Uh, Sorry? I work in system administration. Okay. Are you thinking about eventually becoming your own business, Sonia? Yeah, I would like to eventually start. Cool. Okay. Did we cover everybody? Mm, yep. Okay, good. So, you know, we sort of talked about this. Um, why are you doing this? Does anybody, um, did this start off as a hobby for anyone, the businesses that you have? Or is it just because it was a, it was a need in the market and boys decided to jump on it? Yours is second, second option. Something <coughs> at my day job, uh, one of the uh, suppliers came to me with like a yellow pages ad. Someone, mm -hmm. one of his neighbors had design for him and said like, how much could you do it for? And, I gave him a quote, and he said, "Wow, it's a twelfth what the what the agency was doing with, you know, was." And I'm, I'm like, "Okay." He said, "Well, you can go design his ad for that, right?" You awesome. Know? You never know. Let people know what you do. I mean, within uh, this question, of course, depends on where you work and so forth. But if people don't know what you do, or what you what you love to do, your passion, which was your passion, but your passion is, they'll figure out the rest of it. And come to you. Is that correct, Rob? Yeah. Because then again, do not feel like you're selling them anything? I always tell people, like, I do timeline therapy for clients, okay, which is NLP, which is really deep, that's really deep. But it's not we can go out and say to people, you know what, you have to do this. We can't convince people to do something. But at the end of the day, they know I do it, and, you know, it's a, a whole group of us do it. But the fact is, 
we do it. And they know we do it. So I just have to skip along because I know time-wise and I don't even know what time it is. Um, if anyone wants to tell me what is the greatest challenge right now, what is the greatest challenge that you have right now with your business? Um, I'm not a great self promoter. Oh my God. I'm not, a, I'm not a great self promoter. So I can talk about things and I'm able to, when I'm working for clients, sort of on the marketing side, because I do both, and I'm able to talk up their product or their service and promote the heck out of it. And when I'm talking about myself and as a nutritionist, it's so personal that it's, I, find, I find it uh, a little hard. Why did you get into it? Um, so, not a hobby. A short version. Uh, not, it wasn't a hobby, it was a passion. So I went through my own health issues. I sort of it's a story. saw what it could, the power of, and transformational power of food and healthy lifestyle. So do you speak? Do you get interviewed to speak on stage or? I do, so yeah, yeah, my business is, uh, I don't do one-on-one -on -one consulting. I do workshops and seminars and speaking engagements. So, um, so do you, station, really. so do, you um, do you do interviews and so forth? I've done a couple of podcast interviews. Uh, Did any TV interviews? Sorry, TV? No, no. Okay, so yet, yet. Well, we can fix that. Um, but the point is, when you tell this, everybody, anybody here has stories. But anybody does not have a story, and I'm sure everybody does. Everybody should have a story. Anybody? You guys are so savvy. Watch me. Does anybody have a story of why they're doing their business? So why they got into it? Yes, Mark, you want to share with us? Sure. So uh, you want to stand for, up? For a this start? is because you're recording the voice. I'm, I'm short too. Oh, so. no. <laughs> He's recording the voices. So I was ready for a startup in uh, 2008. Um, we forget that there was a major credit crunch at the time. So the company that I was working for went from trying to raise $10 million to $5 million to $1 million and then eventually merged with another portfolio company and uh, I got laid off. So three kids. Mortgage, what am I going to do? So I went on social media like we do and said, Hey, I lost my job. <laughs> and uh, and somebody said, Hey, uh, we would you could you do a marketing report for us? And Mark Strategic Marketing, and I've never done one in my life. I was a journalist, right? <laughs> and uh, I said, I went Google and went, Yeah, sure, I can Google do that. is great. This is the internet, you don't know what to do. And anything. that was the start of my, uh, my marketing career right there because it was a need. It was survival. And the funny thing about that story, it may sound like it's everybody's story, but it is everybody's story at some point in time. And it's okay to tell people what happened because you would let them know that they're not alone as well. So do share your story, do share it with people, and more will come out of it because each and every one of you cannot tell me you don't have a story, okay? Because I know that. Um, anybody? Anybody else with your challenge? Greatest challenge right now? Just trying to put everything in there. I would. My channel. Right stand up because mm -hmm. he's so soft. I'll, I'll talk about it. There, there's a reason. No, no, no. There's a reason why I'm telling you to stand up. This is how you talk about your business. You stand up and you talk about your business. Okay. Um, I reject your voice and talk. This is okay. You're working here right now, and so book the room. My greatest challenge right now is finding my, my price setting. Mm -hmm. So I know what my hourly rate is, but I don't know what. What's your hourly rate? $25 an hour. $25. How long have you been doing this? Um, about four or five years. Rob, how much is your hourly rate? One fifty. <laughs> My hourly rate minimum. as a media company, a CEO of a media company, is two hundred twenty-five dollars. That's minimum. Yeah, that's up. And we did it in the street standard average. You understanding yourself? You don't know what your value, what you. No, I'm not discrediting you. Just please understand that. But once you begin to explore, understand exactly what you do. Mm -hmm have a better appreciation and value of your own self and your work. So we're going to be doing a workshop in Oshawa, an upstairs of a mini mall that's now being transformed. She's charging $25 an hour. Are you equivalent to that? you got to be joking. Do you know how much it is you put into doing that, what you do? So you believe you're $25 an hour? You should be? No, but I'm, I don't know what. I guess. Go and Google it. Or go uh, do do uh, uh, research. Talk to Rob for God's sake. Talk to other people. But the fact is, most people will not charge twenty five dollars an hour. That's like you might as well go get a paycheck, yeah. which is like pretty much twenty something dollars an hour. Especially once you start slicing out insurances and things like that. Overhead. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask. The other thing is. 
Okay. Go ahead, if please. You, this is what it's about. <laughs> if you underprice yourself, the market's never going to tell you that you're underpricing. Yeah. Yourself. If you overprice yourself, you might find out what people aren't willing to pay, and you can start discounting and get to the right place. Well, listen, I don't get me wrong. I have people. I have. I found my amazing design on, on Fiverr. We told a friend of mine who for it, and if I could bring him here, I would bring him here. I'm telling you, he's amazing. This guy loves what he does. It's passion, right? It's his passion. Half the time, I keep saying, "Send me your bill. Send me your bill. Send me your bill. Send me your bill." But he loves what he does. And he's worth so much more, and I know that. But he doesn't see that. So I always overpay him, because I know what he puts in it. So if I would say to you now, do you guys mind if I take a moment to just mm -hmm. do this with him? Like I said, I'm going to be a lesson. If, just put your foot down for a minute. Put your foot down for a minute, go on yourself. Yes, like this. Put your hands Close your eyes for a minute. Take a deep breath. And ask yourself what you think you're worth. Seriously, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. No, it's you're okay. Everybody's okay. Everybody's supporting him, right? Yeah, Everybody yeah, could do this. What do you? What number comes to your mind that you believe you can go out there and people tell people you're worth right now? Give me the number. Come on, come on. Give me a number fast. Okay, well, we'll work with fifty, but it's better than it's double. You just double. Yeah. But work on that. But it's still better than what you were two seconds ago. I guess it, I would say because I don't have. First of all, don't say yes. You just you get everything yeah, you just said. Yes. But I have no just my brand in the industry. So, so I just okay. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. When I started NDP Media, I didn't even know nothing. I didn't even like to be in front of a camera. I just know that I was going to do that book and somebody told me I had to pay to go for her son. And she didn't even tell me I had to be going to go on this interview, which is another story and it wasn't that great in the first place. And I was like, okay, it was a, I was very sick. And I was like, okay, you know what? Fine. But if she can do it, I can do it. Because a friend of mine had a camera, my ex business by my father knows. If she can do it, I can do it. I went and created a TV show. Had nothing. The first couple was in the back of a restaurant. But instantly, everybody knew me as a media person. So I had to live the part. So I lived for two years as a charity. Then eventually, we were working on a space. Long story short, I'll tell the story the next day. And of course, we ended up getting our own space now. We had a pill, a bill to pay. Mm -hmm. But I was one of the charity giving everybody productions. I learned very hard in those two years what charity is about, <coughs> a lot about the industry. But I tell you, my camera, wherever I went, wasn't in that camera, that part of it. People just saw the camera and they automatically, I would be in places. I have done um, senators and uh, CEOs and uh, culture. This is nothing impressive, but to tell you that. You don't have to be a specialist. People don't know. They hired him and he didn't even know what he was doing. He went and Googled it. <laughs> have a conversation with Mark. You have four or five years experience. Don't feel intimidated by if you can approach hypothetically Rob. Rob, I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure, Rob. Do you mind spending at least an hour of coffee with him Good as coffee. a mentor in the same industry to teach him? Rob has. Fortune 500 companies. He doesn't need a little, really need a little, you know what I'm saying. His niche is much bigger clients. But somebody helping him, as he did that for me. It takes time. It, it does, does take time. It doesn't. He spent a lot of months with me. Rob and I used to go everywhere together. But everybody has a time and place and a season. And of course, now we're here. When he walked in this morning, I was very surprised to see him. I wasn't recognize him. So I'm saying to you, take the opportunities with him to do that for you when I put him on the spot. <laughs> seize the moment, seize the moment. And he will do that. He just loves, just buy coffee. He loves coffee. And he loves hot chocolate. Coffee. Hot chocolate. You don't do hot chocolate anymore? See? But I'm saying, I'm not kidding you. Get his card and sit with him and talk to him. And the rest of you can do the same thing, but that's up to Rob. Don't try to say We have one person just walked in. Your name, please? Sorry, your name? Me, yeah. Yeah, I'm And what do you do? I'm a student. Okay, and what are you looking for? How can you hear this morning? Waiting for the next session? Uh, no, I'm in the room. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. Sorry, are you, it's a web designer, is that what you do? Yeah, web designer. Oh, okay, I'm just curious what you did, yes. Yeah. yeah, so, again. The only, the only advice I'd like to add to that is if you undervalue yourself, your clients are going to undervalue you. So you attract what I call tire kicker clients. So once you get to that point where 
you're charging $50, $75, $100 an hour. Believe it or not, those clients are less stressful than the one you give a break to. Because the ones you give a break to don't understand value. Mm -hmm. And what happens is they want everything for nothing. The ones that you charge what I call real money or big dollars to, they'll give you everything because they understand what they're paying for. They're looking for, and that's, they expect it. Yeah. They expect to write you a check. He told me how much he made last year. Awesome, by the way. <laughs> um, you can share. I don't care. He made over 400. 400,000. Last mm -hmm. year. Why? Because he's worked really hard. He knew what he wanted. He went out. And they know if I give him a check for 50,000, 100,000, they're getting what they want. So they have a peace of mind. Yeah. The poor money mindset nonsense has to stop. There, there's a saying. It has to stop. Has to stop right now. Uh, just, sorry, just now. Sir, I want to share a saying while you're out there. If you give enough people what they want, you're going to get what you want. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of go by that and you, you go out and you service your clients, they're going to give you what you want. You just have to ask for it. It's trust. So I've helped many companies with pricing. And I always argue that you ought to have what I call box of rocks multiplier. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, you want to give, you know, you're going to give somebody a bid or a price anyway. But if they are a box of rocks, that price is significantly higher than, you know, than your whatever your normal rate is. So you've got to fault fault all of these kinds of things because they're going to be a pain to work with. Uh, a, I'd rather they go away. But if I'm going to get them, I'm going to make a lot of money on it. You're, you're actually, I well, call I call it a screw with me charge, but same thing. <laughs> well, I say you I've have used to, other words for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I say you have to have the kahunas to really yeah. stand in front of someone. This is why I'm coming back to this original what I'm saying. Yeah. If you are the CEO of your company and you know what you're worth, mm -hmm. you can go out there and say, you know, not to be cocky, don't get me wrong, okay? But people will um, at least listen to what you have to say. Give you the time to have a meeting with you. I have a meeting with Calvin Klein and all those people and so forth to do things and, and things like that. Yes, I did, they're on the shelf because we, it was for a different reason. And you know, looking at the, the local CEO on our show. All these things for different reasons we're doing it. But the point is just to get in the office was another story, but it's very simple. So my point to you is it doesn't hurt to go out and reach. There's a big, I don't want to say that, there's a big media company here locally that I across Canada do, do an assignment for them every month and so we hire about close to 40 photographers, well maybe less because some do multiple, um, 30 something photographers across Canada and it's growing. But very simple photography assignment. Mm -hmm. But they were my first clients and it's funny how we ended up getting them too as well. Um, Mark, if you don't mind, if, if you, know, you want to share, just want to prove a point here, maybe this, I'm sorry but picking on you, I'm at you. <laughs> but, um, when they ask you to do that job, it was you, right? When they ask you to do that job, how much did they, if you want to share with us, it's a point, but knowing nothing, how much did they pay you, hypothetically? Five grand. It was five grand if you don't know nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. The, um, just to, to the point about the $25, is that I oftentimes, is, is that perception is reality. Mm -hmm. If you're cheap, they think you're cheap, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and so even though you do really good work and you want to, you want to be reasonable and you want to attract the business, um, they'll think that you're not any good because you're too cheap. Exactly. Can I just add something to that in, in the whole value? And it sounds like we're picking on you, but these are just. Oh, no, no, we're not picking on him. That's why I'm this. He's actually benefiting the most here today, to tell you honest to God, true, because believe me, at the end of the night, you will not be able to sleep. And you're going to stay business tomorrow. <laughs> I just want to say, so so I'm, I still sort of do some social media marketing for a few clients here and there. and. The biggest challenge that I find these days is I'm working with some small businesses and when I give them my rate, they say, oh, well, that's not in my budget and I can go, and these are some of the words I've heard, I can go and hire a kid for $20 an hour to do the same thing. And then I say, that's fine. That's what you want to do. Hire somebody I brand new. That's, that's completely fine. I've got the experience. But I think we also, as professionals, have a responsibility not to undervalue the market so that that doesn't happen to the rest of us. Because that happens more often than not. So you are a web developer, is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. If they can hire you for 25 and you're fantastic, um, they're going to do it instead of paying 75 or or $100. But then we're bringing down the average price that people have to pay. Um, and it impacts. Yeah, you're kind of making it bad for the rest of everybody. <laughs> because that one is what she's trying to say. The funny thing is, I had a girl who was doing social media for me. 
and we know she was coming out and she was working at part time at Banana Republic and she was doing this and this. And every time I talked to her, and like I said, there's some cool things I do. So I will, suddenly I would just pick up the phone and call her and this is what happens to me. And she's like bawling and crying and so forth. And I said, what's wrong? So obviously she's doing, I'm paying her social media for me. Um, somebody suggested her. I said, well, she's affordable, you know, big deal. But the end of the day is, but the time she had to go to Banana go down Republic because like 5 o'clock in the morning and so forth. Why she was doing that was to get the 20% discount. I said, you're kidding me? So then she's complaining that she has some clients for so long and they want everything, everything, everything. And do you know, I coached her. Didn't you I just said, actually I was paying her for social media. I coached her out of her social media for me because she wanted to jack up a price of 500 and whatever. So thank you. And what happened was, she did that. So I couldn't afford it anymore. Mm. So I coached her out of her position. So <laughs> the point is, she saw about she didn't know how to balance it. I said, well, why don't you not? I mean, somebody will call her and do this and do this. Social media stuff is not easy. Web development is not easy. Those things are not easy. Okay? I wouldn't even tell them much I pay for my website. And those guys, I, they asked me my budget. I told them my budget was a very nice budget, by the way. And they were supposed to do everything. They didn't do anything. We, on my advisor, did everything. Cause the teeth, the eyes, everything. It's a beautiful website, don't get me wrong, because it's being recognized everywhere. But the point is, this is what I'm saying. So if you do good work, don't undermine yourself. Put a, put a price where you can probably play a little, but at the end of the day, that's what he does. And he learned it the hard way. Okay, I know we gotta wrap up, so. So, um, so do you all believe that you are the CEO of your business yet? Or have, I don't expect it to transform over in, in 45 minutes, but the point is, are you thinking that you really have to reprogram your brain as to who you are in your company? Anybody? Anybody? Trying. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Again, you have to believe that you are, who is, if somebody comes to you and asks you about something, are you going to say go to somebody else to make, who's the decision maker at the company? So what are you? Oh, the founder, the president, those strong words, right? So, um, you know, you talk about, you know, your website, your bio, it has to be sexy and attractive. It has to, to want, you want to make, I always say this, don't care. You have to make love to this thing, that you love it. I have this book since 2011, I did this I still love the cover of this book. Other people think it's me, it's not me. I love the cover of this book. I could never get, I know some people put something on the shelf. I could never get enough of seeing this. Why? It's an amazing cover. It has done amazing. But it's a really good cover, by the way. What's the book? Can you show it? Mm -hmm. The fraud in your reading? The, 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 I'm talking about the design. Um, so, you know, we got to think about, you know, regardless if you're local or foreign or wherever it is you are from, you know, you still, you don't have to be stationed here. You can work globally. Stop thinking about just local, local. Think about those guys out there. Rob, you have international clients. With the days of webinars, air flights, web conferencing. I do a lot of my work by web conferencing. You got to think that way. International clients is hard. Time zones are hard. You just got to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and always be a student because what you do for somebody in Egypt with somebody totally different would have to do in North America. It's totally different cultures. You have to learn cultures. You have to learn all these things. You have to get used to time zones. He knows about it. You have to do all these things. You have to understand all that. So you have to live and breathe this 24-7 or 28-7 or whatever it is, if there's enough hours in the day. Um, you know, some people just don't know where to go next. And I always say after, this is one of the things we say, after you leave here today and you go to another workshop and you go to another workshop, you go to another uh, seminar, another event, and so forth and so forth, what's next? you absorbing. Some people here say you're here to learn. But what are you going to do with it after? As a CEO of a company, I say to people, you don't have to master everything. I just signed up for two uh, Udemy, is Udemy they call it? Um, I did two workshops, I do it in between courses, in between when I feel like it, 
but it's just because I wanted to understand some of the terminology in the street and social media and so forth because there's some of them I don't use and I don't know and some I didn't even know existed. So you have to understand some of the language. So if I don't, it's a conversational piece. Just like I had my mortgage broker many months ago, insisted I do mortgage, I'd be a mortgage agent. I said, I don't want to be a mortgage agent because I don't want my not my license number behind me. But I, I could have from the financial industry in the back and go Google me, you'll find out about that, those things. That's the boring part of it. But the fact is, I did it because I can have a different conversation when I'm sitting with people, no matter what it is I'm talking about. Right? So always be willing to learn. But take action. So please go and register your companies. If you haven't registered a company, we haven't a uh, sole proprietorship, go and limit your company. So the one I recommend. But speak to the accountant. I'm not an accountant, this going on. Um, you know. And do you most of you put your hands up, do you reach out to the local market or the global market? Both. Or both. both. So both. how many people kind of stay in the local market? Why? Why? I can answer that question. Please um, do. I, I do prefer uh, it being in person. Um, I feel like when I'm talking to people about health and wellness, it is a very personal thing, mm -hmm. uh, and I like that personal interaction. So, and because it's only a part of what I do, I still have, and so I still straddle the world of nutrition and marketing, and um, that's how I like to approach it. Uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of money to be made kind of doing these online webinars and whatnot, but in my opinion and my philosophy of nutrition is there's no one answer um, for everybody, and I feel like it would be irresponsible of me to try to give a blanket webinar without being able to talk to people personally. So, so for me, it's it's just a it's just how I feel about approaching wellness. However, if I may add to that, it's good for thought. You're local, talking about this, but at the same time, people somewhere else will hear what you're saying mm -hmm. and may even invite you to come out and do whatever. So that's where you jump to the global market. Well, and there's tools like Webinar Ninja, which yeah. allows you to be fully interactive with everyone in. So you can actually have in-depth, one-on-one conversations with folks so, and at the same happen, time. After I've tried a couple of online, mm -hmm. and I just found it too impersonal for my style, but maybe I'm just not approaching it. Well, just let people, by the way, let people know, Rob's been traveling a lot, yeah. let people know that you do, you're willing to travel. Somebody wants to hire you and say, hey, come up because it's such whatever it is, maybe you have this cool technique that you do. You're there for hire. The sure. point is don't limit yourself, don't limit yourself to just here. What you do here, you can do over there. I think we got to wrap up. These guys are waiting outside. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it's, uh, I was just going to say, uh, my dad was a sport tailor, and actually there's a dad a sport tailor in Scotland. And it's a very personal thing, like you're actually in, mm -hmm. like you're touching somebody's body when you're doing that stuff. Yeah. You see him repeat, and you get to know him. I don't touch people, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, but he, he actually, no one comes to him, he's flown around the world. He just makes events, mm -hmm. like people book a time, uh -huh. and then he goes and does it for them there, and they pay for him to fly out and do it. So if you think about it that way, yeah. again, something that personal, that means so much to people, like it's your health and luck. Right, yeah. and it is such a personal thing. Yeah. Okay, see, so the, thing about, really good. the thing about it is, before I wrap up here, uh, you know, what, um, one of the things is, what are, you, uh, just a second, what are you not doing right now that if you were do, would take you to the next level? One of the things you're not doing, you're still thinking about you have to be physical with someone one-on-one. -on -one. I get that. I do NLP, there's timeline therapy. I don't do that at all. Some people do it because it's a very, it, it can be very dangerous, um, scary because of the states that you're in. However, if people don't know what you're doing globally, then you're just limiting yourself. You have technology. Yeah. You want people to know. That's why you need to have more the visual and talk about, do some video um, blogs and so forth. Everybody wants to do the podcast and hide behind the camera. Yes, I don't look like this every day. For God's sake, that's why I don't do the podcast, the, the, the blogs and so forth. Unless I am dressed up. But sometimes you're at your home office or whatever. Believe me, you don't have to see when I wake up in the morning. So I can't do some of the things that you guys do, right? So the point I'm saying is take advantage of that. Let people know what you're doing. Because you may have cousins here, there, this way, whatever, and people say, hey, guess what? Then write a book about what you do. Become the specialist. For me, I think it comes back to my block of I'm not a great self-promoter. So I need to work on that part of it. We can have a chat. 
Oh, by the way, like I said, I am also a master practitioner of people therapy, so I will knock whatever I need to knock on the <laughs> <laughs> No, no, this is serious. I will knock all those different, you know, mind limiting decisions and so forth, and that can go away like this. Believe me. Believe me that will go away. Just like you really didn't do anything, but just change it. But the point is, you, you, you double your car, and don't you dare drop it. You can go higher, but you dare drop it. Okay? And let Rob tell you, starting out, on your base on what you are, maybe, please do, I'm, I'm asking you, what do you believe when you have a conversation and what you believe he is worth yeah. in what he does? Yeah. Not to undermine what you're doing. This is why we do what this is. It's just, it's just value in finding out what you're not in So what I want to say to you all, I know you're going to wrap up, you have the other guys coming in, is the fact that what I want you to take away from here is know what you're worth. What is your next step? Please think of you guys as setting up your business structure. 10, the Entrepreneurs Network is here to help entrepreneurs from the A to Z in their business through the whole life cycle of a business. Yes, there's a life cycle of a business. There's also four pillars. You have to know the technical side of it. You have to know the management side. You have to know everything about your business. Are you going to be successful every part of it in the beginning? No, you're going to screw up. But it's good to you know, because it's more less than to say, you know what, I wouldn't do that again. Or we go and find help and say, you know what, it's okay. I need help. You'd be surprised. Your LinkedIn profile, please clean it up. You're professionals. That's where professionals go. Don't spend so much time on Facebook. That way it's not good. Don't spend your time where you're not supposed to be. You have to do some credit management. Any last question before we go? Because those guys are out there. I'm going to take this disconnect. is probably doing it. Any last questions? Nobody. Social yes. media strategy. Like, just a quick uh, tidbit on that. What do you, what's your philosophy on social media and content that you put out for to attract people through social media? I always believe, and any question you ask me is not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. Agree? Yep. You have to customize it because when you're looking at your industry, you have to look at your industry and see what works best. Right now, we're in a digital world, and you need to go people a visual. I'm visual. I'm very visual. No, create a a video, create um, a teaser, promoter to what you do with your business. Now, do you not want some of your business to replace your other incomes that's coming in? You ask me? Um, no, I, I, like, what, my writing, you mean? Uh, Whatever it is. Yeah, I definitely want that to take over. I want to do that more for, for full time. So, yes. um, so but, but social media has been something I've been kind of like trying to figure out what my strategy is, what I want to do with it. And this How is the issue you have. Stop trying yourself to figure out what it is. They're experts who do this for a living. You just have to pay for it because we're going to sit there and learn everything. You're going to spend God knows how long learning and learning and learning and when are you going to get the time to implement all of this? You have to outsource and delegate things. You have to. Can you build your own website? Can you do your social media? Can you do your own marketing? Can you do your own branding? Can you do all those things? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you don't have to have a knowledge of it because you need to be smart about where you put your money. Mm -hmm. But don't you all agree that talk to somebody else who does that? Mm -hmm. Have a lot of coffees? Yeah. Find the right people? And by the way, you will always find the first person might be the right person. It's a, it's a test. Mm. It's a test. Any questions? Anybody have my card? If you have any questions, please don't hesitate and they all come. Oh my God.